Puerto Ricans and the Attica Prison Uprising of 1971 by the Center for Puerto Rican Studies at Hunter College. Puerto Ricans played a significant role during the infamous prison uprising that took place at the Attica State Correctional Facility in 1971. They were on both sides of the conflict. Puerto Ricans made up 9% of the inmate population at Attica. In addition, several members of the Observer Committee sent to the prison during the four-day standoff for Puerto Rican. This presence is embedded throughout historian Heather Ann Thompson's 2016 Pulitzer Prize winning account of the Attica Prison Uprising, Blood in the Water, the Attica Prison Uprising of 1971 and its legacy. In the opening chapters, for example, Thompson outlines the shared struggle of Puerto Rican and African American inmates at the prison, who, in addition to the deplorable conditions for all inmates, faced even harsher treatment. A majority of the more difficult, lower paying and menial jobs were assigned to African American and Puerto Rican inmates, which in turn made prison life more difficult, less funds, more strenuous, etc. Puerto Ricans and African Americans were also subject to more stringent regulations when it came to family visitations. In some cases, the abuses, while shared among African Americans and Puerto Ricans, were relative to each group. Male censorship, for example, was much stricter for African American and Puerto Rican inmates. Yet, for Puerto Rican inmates, the letters they received were simply discarded because they were written in Spanish, rather than the harsh scrutiny given to the letters received by Black inmates. The language barrier led to other abuses, most visibly in the form of neglect when it came to medical attention. Thompson accounts the experience of Angel Martinez, a young Puerto Rican prisoner who neither spoke nor understood English. He was sent to Attica after becoming addicted to heroin, which he had begun using in an attempt to relieve the pain caused by his polio. Thompson notes that the two doctors on staff, Dr. Selden T. Williams and Dr. Paul G. Sternberg, were particularly unresponsive to the medical needs of Attica's Puerto Rican population. Inmates like Martinez were unable to articulate themselves, yet even so, more, most inmates re rarely received adequate treatment. According to Thompson, the doctors never bothered to request interpreters. Though there was one Puerto Rican correctional officer at Attica, his colleagues insisted that he did not speak Spanish with the inmates. After prisoners took over the prison, several prominent Puerto Rican activists and politicians were part of the Observer Committee sent to Attica. U.S. Congressman Herman Badillo and New York State Senator Robert Garcia were part of the 35-member group along with Tom Soto, a young Puerto Rican activist from New York, and Bronx school official Alfredo Matthew. Two members of the Young Lords, Juan Fi Ortiz and Jose Paris, were also included in the group. According to a New York Times report, inmates had initially requested that only Young Lords be sent in as members of committee. The Young Lords had been active in the prison prior to the uprising. In fact, Mariano Dalao Gonzalez, a leader within the Young Lords Party, was part of the group of prisoners responsible for organizing their fellow inmates, assuring the safety of the 39 hostages, issuing a list of grievances and demands, and requesting an observer committee. He was also tasked with translating for the Spanish-speaking inmates. Upon his release in 1974, he would travel the country speaking and organizing on behalf of the Attica Brothers, the group of 62 prisoners indicted by the state, which effectively effectively blamed them for the prison uprising. Luis Nunes, a longtime national director of ASPRA of America, was named to a five-person panel which oversaw the transitional period following the uprising. The group concluded that many inmates still face harassment. Nevertheless, for prison inmates, the uprising had been a demonstration of racial unity across political affiliations with 28 of their demands being met by the state. The legacy of their actions and the role of Puerto Ricans in this struggle can be seen in the nationwide strike that took place on the 45th anniversary of the Attica prison uprising, which continues to resonate with the movement to end mass incarceration and guarantee prisoners' rights. So briefly, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because number one, it's um, Hispanic Heritage Month, and number two, um, recently, uh, when my husband was at one of his work meetings, I overheard um, a conversation that they were having. And um, one of his uh, bosses said something about how Puerto Ricans back in the day, uh, during the, uh, the, 
the whole Attica prison uprising and all of that, he was basically talking about how they didn't know which water fountain to use, whether to use the um, white water fountain or the uh, black water fountain. And for some reason, it made me think of the things that I hear on YouTube all the time when it comes to Latin type politics, conversations, whatnot, when it comes to race relations. And I feel like we're still kind of in that that state where it's like, we still don't know. And this was in 1971 that this happened. And we're still in a situation where it's like, we still don't know exactly where we stand when it comes to race and where we fit in. And... um when I found this um, this article, I was like, you know what? This is something that I want to pay homage to. And I want I wanted to bring this up. And I know that this doesn't talk anything about water fountains or anything like that. But it just um, points out the gravity of the situation at the time. And it points out how um, influential Puerto Ricans were at that time. And also it, it, it explains the, um, the, the, the levels of discrimination that we faced along with Black Americans. So that was my little video for today. I'm going to do my best to um, upload more when I can. Um, it's getting a whole lot busier now with my son. So I feel like I'm not going to be able to be put, pushing out content like that the way I did at one time. So it is what it is. As always, I thank you all for watching. And I hope you all enjoyed this. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.